morning, everyone. A few years ago, American Express had an advertising campaign with the slogan, membership has its privileges. And naturally, with that campaign, they showed uh, people going on vacation. They showed fancy cars, boats, and all sorts of great luxuries that people can buy, even houses. That's one of the privileges of having this exclusive privilege of, that American Express offered. Of course, other credit card companies picked up on this and decided to offer very generous offers as well. However, what all realize is that privileges also come with responsibilities. So you can charge anything on your credit card, but then comes the day where you actually have to pay for it. And if you don't, what happens? Well, those privileges are revoked. It's very much the same way with our Christian life. We have a lot of privilege of being a follower of Jesus Christ. We saw some of them in today's gospel. We saw the privilege of asking Jesus for healing and immediately 10 lepers were healed. Each one of us feels certain advantages of being here this morning, certain advantages of praying, perhaps a sense of peace in our life, perhaps a good decision that we made because of something we read in the Bible or something we, we heard that other saints did, and that saved us from a lot of trouble. That's a privilege. Um, unfortunately, sometimes we are given a privilege, but we don't exercise it properly, and therefore the fruit of it is not very positive. Let's unpack a little bit some of, these, some of the details of this gospel, the gospel and the epistle, that is. In the first letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, he speaks about some some privileges, but also always attaches that with responsibilities. He says, when Christ our life appears, then you too shall appear in glory. And just like everything else in the gospel, when we read these texts, they apply specifically to us. When Christ appears, we too will appear in glory. And that is not only something that we experience later on in life or at the end of the world, we experience it here today. We experience it every day in our life, that when we are faithful to Christ, when we come to church and allow Christ to work in our life, there is a certain glory in us, a certain transformation in us. But this doesn't come without some responsibilities. And it's always important to ask ourselves, what are the responsibilities of our Christian faith? And St. Paul specifies it very clearly, because sometimes we kind of get stuck on generalities. Be good, avoid evil, which is a good parameter to work within. But what are the specifics? St. Paul lists them, and there are several areas in the New Testament where there are actually lists, and actually in the, in the Old Testament as well, where there are, as you know, the Ten Commandments. There are lists of things that we should do and lists of things that we should not do. St. Paul clarifies, he says, put to death whatever in your members is of the earth. Immorality, uncleanness, lust, evil desire, covetousness, which is a form of idol worship. And because of these passions, God's wrath comes upon the sons of disobedience. He also goes on to say, Now you too put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, abusive language, and foul mouth utter utterances. Do not lie to one another. Strip off the old person with the deeds and put on the new. Those are all the responsibilities. We don't have time to go into each and one of them um, in detail. But read them, and unlike what I did, sit with them half an hour, an hour, and each and every one of them ask yourself, am I living the responsibilities of my faith? Why should I live these responsibilities? So St. Paul goes on to say, strip off the old person with, the, with his deeds and put on the new one that is being renewed towards perfect knowledge according to his creator's image. That is why. He gives us direct fruits of our actions. He tells us not only what our privileges are, what our responsibilities are, but also what are the results of living our spiritual life. And that is also a very important part of our daily walk with the Lord. To see the fruit, and I ask all of you to either today or now, to think of some great blessing that has happened in your life and dwell on that and allow that to grow. Allow Allow your faith to be a source of great joy for you. Because very often, people see the faith as simply a bunch of rules. And they are not. 
They're not a bunch of abstract rules simply to hinder you having fun or to do whatever you want. There's always, we should always keep in mind the th these three stages, the privileges we have been given, the responsibilities we have, and also the fruits that are the result of these privileges and responsibilities. The same pattern takes place and is intertwined also in the gospel that we read today. We perhaps might first notice that the lepers were healed, which is a great thing. We all would want to he be healed of leprosy, which was actually a contagious disease, and everybody wanted to be away from lepers. Nobody wanted to be even close to them, but Jesus healed them. Ten lepers, the details of the gospel tells us they stood far off, but what did they do? They, they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. And this is also a reflection for us. None of us here has, has leprosy, because for the most part, leprosy has been eradicated on, on very small parts of the world it hasn't. But none of us has a contagious disease like that. But each and every one of us has hidden diseases. When we think of those who are physically handicapped, sometimes people feel sorry for the, those who have lost a leg or can't function in a particular way. But each and every one of us has some sort of handicap. Every one of us has some sort of mental disorder of some sort, some larger than others. And so each and every one of us, including myself, <laughs> fully recognize that I have a lot of mental disorders. <laughs> I'm working on one of them at a time. There are about 387 left, so it's going to be a while. But that's a really important point because we over-glamorize physical beauty and physical health, although we should be physical, physically healthy. But at the same time, God asks us to look inwardly. What are the things that are paralyzing us emotionally and spiritually that others may not see? God wants to heal us of those. And God will. That is the privilege of being a follower of Christ. God wants to reach into your life and heal you. But there is a prerequisite. There is a responsibility, and that is shown to us uh, in a lot of these passages in the Bible, specifically today, where first responsibility is to be able to cry out to the Lord. Cry out and ask him, Jesus, Master, have pity on me, have mercy on me. And right away, the fruit of that is shown to us. And they, as they were going, they were all healed. That is the fruit always see these different stages intertwined in our life. And finally, the second fruit comes at the end where Jesus says to the one man who returned to him, arise, go your way, for your faith has saved you. This is the important thing or one thing I wanted to focus on today is that we may think of the privileges of being a follower of Christ. Number one, stop and think of those privileges. Think of the things that you have benefited in your life because you're a follower of Christ. But then don't leave it at that. Think also of the things that you are required to do to continue to grow in your faith. And that is a daily walk. I mentioned before that 1% of the day is around 15 minutes. To be able to set aside at least 1% of your day to fulfill your responsibilities. Otherwise, you will not be able to see the fruits. We want the fruits. We also should focus on the responsibilities. That is what those who got an American Express card and kept it realized. They were given the privileges, but they lived the responsibilities and saw the fruits. But that is much more important in our spiritual life to be open to the privileges that God gives us, but also be willing to commit ourselves to the responsibilities and rejoice in the daily fruits that he gives us.